One of the questions I've been getting from faculty members in regards to going online um, is the missing a document camera. There's lots of ways that you can get around this. Um, one of the ways you can also get just get around is just to get a document camera. You can actually buy them online, little USB document cameras, and use them as a ex another video camera when you're on, say, Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate Ultra or something like that. Or you can use it whenever you're doing a screen recording. But I've actually um, prefer to use OneNote. And so how I use OneNote is I actually have my tablet. So I have my little iPad mini here, uh, but it works with basically any tablet. And what I did is I picked up, because my iPad mini, the, it's a four, which means it doesn't uh, I'll use the Apple pen. When I picked up one of these little um, pensy styluses, it can be used with any type of touch device and uh, it just needs a battery in it. So this one actually has a rechargeable battery and I just turn it on or off. I can charge it through a USB port. And uh, so what I've done is I have OneNote installed as an app on my tablet and then I pull up on the web-based version and I can talk about why I do that later, but I pull up on the web-based version on my screen and then I either do my screencast like this, which I can demo right now, or I can also um, do it live, something like Blackboard Collaborate Ultra or Zoom or whatever, and I share my screen and I would share this screen and then I use this to do my document camera type of stuff. So let me show you what I mean by that. So first off, um, I could just use it just basically for just as a drawing tool. So for example, I could um, take my pen and I can draw on it. And as soon as I let go, it shows you on the screen what I've done. So I could diagram with things like, for example, if I wanted to do a Venn diagram or something and I wanted to diagram whatever I was doing, I could do that. Obviously, that's not normally what I use my document camera for. Normally what I do is I have some sort of thing on it um, and I then draw on top of it. So there's a few little tricks that you can do to make this work. So first off, because I'm using the OneNote app on here it allows me to insert from camera and what's interesting about using the insert from camera is that um, whenever i have a say i have a textbook i'm just going to use this textbook as an example this is academic inquiry from scott douglas thank you scott um, and maybe i have something on here that i want to use as um, maybe something to go over in class. So I can actually use the document function on here, which turns into like a scanner type of thing. And so I can actually just go in here and click. And what will happen now is it will allow me to, it will auto crop. It tries to crop out anything that's not the document, but you can also do some manual cropping to it. So I'm just gonna do a quick manual crop to it a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier. And once I click on done, um, it will then load that into the page. And that scan now appears on the screen here. Now, what's interesting is, is it's still a little small, so I'm gonna actually resize it so that it's a little bit bigger, um, just so that it's easier to work with. But once that's done, there's another thing I would like to do, and that is from this end, from on the tablet, or actually on the app, and the, on the um, computer as well, um, you can actually set the image as background and when you set the picture as background what's really cool about it is it won't move now it'll stay put no matter what happens and this is important because we're overlaying the image with annotations and what I've noticed is if I don't set it as background sometimes when I go between the app on my computer versus the web-based version versus the tablet sometimes the annotation and the image move slightly apart from each other. And then of course it doesn't work because it's annotating the wrong section and that type of thing. He said as background, it stays put and everything matches up between the different devices. So that's why I've done that. And plus it allows me to highlight a lot easier. So I'm gonna actually go in here and under the draw tool, I can actually, for example, grab a highlighter and I can highlight a section, something like that, okay? And in real time, as I do it here, it shows up on here. So that's kind of cool because that means I have um, things where I can actually go in and take a pen, for example, and I can circle something, okay? Um, and I can also write notes beside it as well too. So now, excuse my handwriting there. I'm doing it sideways here. Uh, but 
in this particular case, I can actually write notes on things, I can highlight things, I can connect things. So I could underline something and then connect it to something else if I had something that needed to be connected. So obviously these two things aren't connected, but you get the picture of what we can do with this. This allows me to do a lot of annotations and I'll just do it. Now I've got the microphone in the way right now, but normally I have it right in front of me and I would just draw on it and I can make my annotations as I'm talking and you get to see it in real time on my screen while I'm doing it on my tablet. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this is I, if you'll notice in where, where I put this, I put this in the content library. So where this comes really interesting, really helpful is if you have a student who has minimum bandwidth availability, what you can do is because the, when you try to stream the uh, sc shared screen or video part of it, that will eat up a lot of bandwidth. So what you can do is on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and on Zoom, there's a phone number where they can call in with their phone. And so what I can have students do is if they have minimum bandwidth, is they can just pull up one note on their computer and they can call the Zoom number or whatever and they can listen to me while I annotate on the screen. And that saves a lot of bandwidth because it's not having things like video streaming all it is is they're seeing the annotation changes on their screen in real time because OneNote synchronizes with all their people. So if, as long as I'm doing it in a place like the collaboration space or the content library, that they'll be able to see the changes as I make them, but I don't have to share the screen. They can be on the phone listening as well too. So it allows for students who have minimal bandwidth to be able to still participate. They're still using their computer to access OneNote, but they're not doing it for the audio and the video which helps a lot. Uh, so that's one of the really cool things about it. But also with this is you can take something like a graphic organizer and you can put it into the collaboration space. So I like to set up the groups. So the same groups I set up in say Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, I set up the same groups, people in each group in the collaboration space. So you can, in the collaboration space for those who don't know, anybody can edit anybody can view and edit. And so instead of making a whole class access to the area, you can actually limit. And so you can set up a group of say four students who then all can collaborate together. They can draw on things, they can add pages, they can do all that type of stuff, but they can't do it in the other groups. And so you can set up the group, say if you have four students, you can set them up in a breakout group on Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, and then they can go to the collaboration space, find their group section. And if you have set up the page already ahead of time, say you've taken a screenshot or you have a, a, a document where you can actually I can show you how you can insert a document, make it an image, and they can then make that image and set it as background. And then they can add text onto it. They can type text, they can draw things, they can even add the stickers and all sorts of things to it if they want. So that's a really cool way for them to be able to work on a graphic organizer of some sort together in real time on Zoom in the breakout groups. So another really cool function of using things like um, the screenshots together with and setting as background image and then using the tool to draw on it and that type of thing. Um, something like this is really handy as a teacher. I'm going to say right now I wasn't quite sure about it when I got it, but I've used it tons. I paid 30 bucks for this because it's um, it can be used with any device. I can use it on my phone, I can use it on my tablet, I can use it on any type of tablet as long as it's touch sensitive. Um, and uh, all it is is it requires a little bit of power. So this one has a built-in lithium ion battery. Now because you're, um, when you're drawing with your hand, if you rest your hand on the screen, it will also pick up that. Um, it also comes with a funky little glove, a two finger glove like this. Uh, which covers over the area where you use a palm rest so you can pick up your pen and I can rest my hand on here and this won't pick up my hand and so then I can draw just like normal so uh, normal uh, don't normally draw with a glove on but I can draw with that and it's a lot easier because I can hold my hand steady on here and it's a lot easier to use this thing um, you can order online lots of different places pick mine up online like I said $30 Canadian and uh, very handy, very well built actually too. Uh, so not here to try and sell on something like that, but it is handy to have a stylus, some sort to use with your touch device to be able to use it as a dot cam. So hopefully it helps you. If you have any questions about using OneNote with your um, online class, let me know and I'll try and put together a video for you. Thank you.